Okay, so, you know, um, today we are going over something that Jesus taught his disciples, like true disciples. They stand on a firm foundation of stone. And then there's foolish disciples who, you know, I would argue really aren't Christians, but real Christians, real disciples of Jesus that build their house on sand. And I was reminded of the story of the three little pigs. <laughs> Who knows that story? I don't know. <laughs> okay, do you know, what did the first little pig build his house with, LJ? Remember? Straw. Straw. What did the second little pig build their house with? Sticks. And then Luke, the wise little pig, the third little pig, what did he build his house out of? Bricks. Uh-huh. The big bad wolf. And do you know who the big bad wolf is in this story? Yeah, who? The what? The wolf. The wolf. Yes, sorry. I thought he said devil. I was like, yes. That's exactly who it is. Yes. The big bad wolf in this story is the enemy. That's what we call him because I don't even like to say his name, really because I don't want to give him any honor, any, any recognition, or anything. But anyways, that is who it is. That's the truth. So, if you're that little pig who decides to build his house out of straw, I'm thinking you're the disciple that might only go by, uh, don't judge others. And then that's it. Nothing else. Just do not judge lest he be judged, which is what Jesus said, but that's not all. That's not. And so the enemy will come along and huff and puff and just blow your house down because that's not the firm foundation because that's not all of what Jesus says. And a lot of the time it's taken out of context and doesn't even apply. Okay, so let's go to the wood one. Maybe that little piggy takes do not judge other and also the golden rule because everybody knows the golden rule. Do you know the golden rule? I Yes, good job. Yes, see, God good writes. Job, Mama. Yeah, God writes His <laughs> law on our heart. We all know these things, but the problem is we don't all choose to live by them. And so, let's say the second little pig has those two. So I'm not going to judge. So everybody can just go on living like the devil, and I'm not going to say anything about it. And then they also say, treat others the way you want to be treated. But again, what does the enemy do? Blow the house down. Blows the house down. It's led straight into destruction. But that third little pig, he's the one. He's the wise one that Jesus commends in this story. He's the one that knows it all. And how do you know it all? How would you know it all? How would you know? What, what did you say, Laramie? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are so right. The only way you're going to know the instructions on how to build your house is through that word, through that Bible, and, and follow Jesus and obey his commands. Don't only hear them. Don't only pick the few that you can do. The, pick the couple that you like. You do it all. And when you do it all, when that enemy comes, he's going to huff and he's going to puff and he's going to try, but, but the house stands. Yeah. The house stands. But then he's going to come back because he does in the story. He doesn't just try once. He comes back and he climbs up to the top and he tries to like get in. Something about the chimney. He goes because, the chimney. yeah, yeah, he tries again to get in. And then he gets yeah, it doesn't end well for him, does it? And it's so true because the enemy has lost. The enemy has lost. And we can defeat the enemy too because Jesus gives us the knowledge. He gives us all the instructions we need to trample on scorpions and snakes and gives us that authority. And it's free. Thank you, Jesus. All this instruction manual for life and how to build our house. So don't let... The enemy come along and blow your house down. Okay? Read the word. Know the word. Live it. 
do it so that your house can stand because there's a lot of shaking going on. A lot of shaking going on. And just remember the enemy loses in the end. It doesn't end well for him. And he wants to take as many people with him as possible because he knows what's going to happen to him. But don't be the one. Let's be the wise little pig. The wise one that builds their house out of brick on that stone and solid foundation, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Y'all want to pray? How about let's say the Lord's Prayer because Jesus taught us that one. You want to say the Lord's Prayer with me? Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Thank Great you, job. Jesus. Hey. Right. Children That's are dismissed. The yes. And look, Laramie's walking. It's so good. It's so good. Mom, am I walking? So good. You yeah, are walking. Miss Kelly, when I, I come up, we're going to go to the church. Let's go build something. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 If I could have someone to do the Facebook Live, Molly's not in here. Nah, Molly, hey, I... Uh, before we start that, uh, hey, Tim, I didn't ask you, but would you mind reading the scripture? Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against off of that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teachings, because he taught because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right. Before we start, let's go ahead and come to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we just want to thank you for today, Lord. And I pray that you anoint this message, brother. I, I ask that you set me aside today, Lord, in order to uh, touch everyone in this room, Father, and those online. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, so today we're going to continue our In Christ Alone series. We know it's In Christ Alone, right? You mean amen on that one, In Christ Alone, right? He is the only one. Today's part two, so there are three parts in this series. And part two today is titled The Perfect Storm. It might have been the best title uh, the Lord's ever given me. Pretty neat. So guys, one thing I want for everyone to know this morning is, is a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about is things that are going on right now in the world. And of course, everything always ties into the Word of God because it's all about Jesus. So right now, as we see it, the storm has been brewing for a while okay, in this world. And before I talk about the storm, I want to uh, say, uh, I don't know exactly where it is, but there's a, there's a picture in the Bible of Jesus talking to the religious leaders and he tells them, he says, you guys can tell all the, all the signs in the natural of the weather, right? You can look at your weather app and you're all ready to, to tell us how that's going, but you can't even tell, tell me what's going on in the spiritual. Guys, right now the spiritual is amped up high, okay? And the storm has been brewing for a while and now it's upon us like we've never seen it before. Because, of course, I mean, we're in present time, right? Everything in the spiritual flows into the natural. I've said that quite a few times, but I want for us to all understand that. The wars and everything that's going on in the spiritual, when it gets closer to the return of Jesus, it flows into the natural. And everything that flows into the natural, we see these things happening in this world. The more, the worse that it gets, the closer it gets to the return of Jesus Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. So I had a dear friend tell me here lately that it's better not to mix politics and religion when you're in the pulpit, but I disagree. 
If the lines are blurred in the Bible, it has to be talked about. It has to be talked about. And whenever the Spirit of God is warning us, warning His saints, warning His people about the things that are coming upon the U.S. of A., we must all understand what's going on. Does anyone have any idea what's going on in the world right now? I just want to leave it open. Socialism. Right. Tyranny. All right, so we have states, and I mean, there's a bunch of them. Uh, I did some research this week. I know for sure California, New York, for a couple states. We have countries, Australia, Canada, that are being forced into tyranny like you cannot believe. And of course, the, the, the governors in the states are given the power. But right now, the President of the United States is actually trying to demand everyone to do something. Okay? And this isn't a, a conversation about do this or do that. It's about our rights. It's about our freedoms. Our God-given rights and freedoms. So to be clear to everyone, the only king that I serve and that we serve in this church is Jesus Christ, right? The only king. But if there ever was a time for us to stand up, it's time, the time is now. So, and, and I'm going to get into a couple things here. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it right now. We live in Texas. We live in West Texas. We live in a small town in West Texas, right? We do. But we would be fools to not believe that things can still come here, okay? Because the Bible says it. All right, that's just a little precursor there. So everything that we see is all about power, control, fear, and greed, okay? That's what it's all about. It's all about. What we see right now, and I strongly believe this in my spirit, guys, is a dress rehearsal. It is a dress rehearsal for things that are going to happen in this world. And if we don't see that, then we're not paying attention. So I found this earlier this week. This is a quote from a Hungarian Jew from a documentary, The Last Days. It says, people wonder, how is it that we didn't do something? We didn't run away. We didn't hide. Well, things didn't happen all at once. Things happened very slowly. So each time a new law came out or a new restriction, we said, well, it's just another thing. It'll blow over. Everything's okay. It's just going slow. When we had to wear the yellow star to be outside, we started to worry. So right now, the president here lately said the pandemic is the unvaccinated. All right, we have a freedom, right? We're born in the United States of America. We can do whatever we want, right? We serve Jesus. We do what he says. We don't do what anybody else says. We have a duty whenever the government goes against our God-given rights. We have a duty to rebel. All right? Some of the stuff I might be saying might surprise you today, but it's the truth, and this is how we're, we are to stand up to this. Otherwise, it's going to be taken away right under our, right under our feet. And so, this is simply, the, the whole agenda is simply painting a picture of good people and bad people, right? Those that, that love their neighbors and those that don't love their neighbors. That's exactly how the devil works. He wants to manipulate. He wants to bring us into fear. He wants to bring us into a point to where we or people, whoever, whatever we decide to do, if we're not doing what the agenda is being pushed, then we are going to be called bad people. You don't love your neighbor. You don't care about others. Well, that's division, and the devil is the divider. But Psalm 2, I love Psalm 2, because basically it talks about how God is up in the heavenlies, and he's just laughing. Because all these people have all these plans, right? But he's just laughing, because he knows how it ends. But... We have a duty to stand up to that. We're the body of Christ. If you are born again of the Spirit above, you have God inside of you. We're not to fear anything. The devil's worst fear is somebody that's not afraid to die because we know who we're doing it for and we're not scared. All right? So, do we listen to God or man? 
Acts 5.29, and Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than man. That's one of my favorite scriptures. And see, whenever he says that, he's talking, they're, they're pretty much telling him, you can't preach the gospel. You can't talk about Jesus. Guys, someday people are going to say, you can't preach the real gospel. Because they consider the real gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that talks about sin, that talks about repentance, that talks about hell, that's hate speech. The gospel that says that, that homosexuality is a sin, that adultery is a sin, that these things are sins, is hate speech to the world because the world gets offended because the devil is the god of this world. But those that stand on their convictions and have no compromise are the ones that fear God rather than man. I don't know about you, but I fear a holy God. A God that is a consuming fire. But if we worry about what other people are doing, and we're not living by faith these days, we're going to get blown away in that storm. And I'll talk about it in a minute. So the apostles, they didn't bow down. They turned cities upside down with their boldness and their faith. Right? Because they preached the gospel because they were on the streets. Because they were out doing what they were called to do. And so for us, it starts in this community. It starts for us to have, to step out in faith and partner with these other churches and start a youth program, right? To teach these kids about the truth. It starts when we're out on the streets at Park and Pray Ministry and we are telling people about Jesus. It starts whenever we have people in our church who are like, hey, we should do a parade because we want to show people Jesus, right? That's where it starts. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit like crazy right now. <laughs> So my question is, are we listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and our convictions that are placed upon our hearts? The only way that we're going to be able to survive in this world in these days is to listen to the voice of God. And then there's some people say, oh, you can't hear God. Yeah, you can. He will send downloads to you, man. He will show you his ways in so many different ways. It's amazing. So for us, before I continue a little bit, I'm going to say that for those of us that love Jesus, guys, for those of us that Jesus is our first love, and I believe most of y'all in this room, I think all of you, we were chosen to live during this time before the foundation of the world. It's amazing. So this storm is, is not, it's going to get worse and worse until one day when it completely takes over and the escalation will overtake those who are not Firmly rooted in the Word of God. Just like Laramie said, the Bible, the Word of God. And who are not living by faith. I love the hashtag faith over fear. Right? For those of us that take a stand, and before we know it, we're being blessed with another job, right? We're being blessed because we're taking a stand. If we only, sometimes I think, if we only realize how much God is wanting us to have faith in Him and Him alone, right? Yes. To where we drop everything and we just go. Just like Isaiah said, send me and I will go. And then God's like, yes, finally. I heard this this week. Heaven's mandate is faith. The world's mandate is fear. Are we going to live on faith or bow down to fear? And we can't ride the faith horse if we have fear in our hearts. Second Timothy 1 7, God does not give us a spirit of fear. Hebrews eleven six says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. But for those that have faith, we please the God that spoke everything into existence. So the scripture that Tim read here is uh, it's appropriate of course for this message. And it's a picture of building upon two foundations, rock or sand. The rock, all that hear his words and do what he says will be saved. It is an explanation of how we can't just hear the message and think we're okay. Because I said it a couple weeks ago, Judas heard every sermon that Jesus preached. But taking it in our heart and receiving it and saying, Jesus, I understand. I want to live for you now. Galatians, I got to pull this cup out. 
This might be a while today, guys. Where that kind of... <laughs> Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, Christ liveth in me. I live, yet not... Whoa, these words are good. I and I, I live, which... I'll just say this. I'm crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Okay? And so if we live a life as though Christ is living through us, we have no fear. Because we live for the King and His kingdom. That threw me off there. Sorry. All right. So we represent Him as the rock. The rock that never falls. And then the man whose house collapsed the sand. The man was at fault because he didn't lay a proper foundation. And see, my wife said it. And I want to say it as well. I believe this is a picture of someone who goes to church every Sunday. But they've never been saved. They've never had the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of them they're self-deceived, and I speak against that inside of this church. If somebody's listening, guys, cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, forgive me even though he already has. Jesus, I want your spirit, and he will save you. A self-deceived Christian who has never had religion, but or never had a relationship, but only religion. The shifting sand represents human opinion and false doctrines. All right? See, it's somebody like this. Well, the resurrection, I can't really wrap my mind around it. It just doesn't make sense in a human, humanly way. Well, God is God, right? We believe in Him. We believe in His Word. And we know that someday there's going to be a resurrection of the dead. Okay? To where Jesus rose from the dead, we're going to rise as well with him. It's going to happen. I heard one time Tony Evans say that the second coming of Jesus Christ is going to make sci-fi look silly. <laughs> because they're going to realize that they had no idea what they were doing. Because we, we don't even know the supernatural, right? We live by faith. Alright, and so, and false doctrines of men. To the real Jesus of Scripture, I said something this week about the real Jesus. I, sometimes I'm just like, the real Jesus needs to stand up. The real Jesus needs to be preached. The Jesus that did not compromise anything. Because the, it's like a parent, right? The parent that is honest and straightforward is the most loving. The parent that doesn't discipline, that doesn't say anything, that doesn't do anything, they don't care. The devil's going to come and he's going to say, you can do whatever you want to do. Just love everybody. Just live however you want. That's what he does. But see, God loves us. And he says, if you live this way, you're going to hell. If you live this way, you're going to heaven. Right? Simple as that. And so again, it explains how everything that can be shaken will be shaken. False, doctor, false gospels will be exposed. The, the different gospels that are not of God, that, that, are, that are so deceitful, will be exposed. We need to be praying that evil is exposed. The devil comes as an angel of light. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't have a pitchfork and horns. He makes things so deceitful. But if we stick to the word, if we be led by the Holy Spirit, we will not be shaken. But pray for exposure. False conversions will be weeded out of the church houses. To where people, man, they just, the, the Bible says they're going to be a great falling away. And I believe we're in the midst of that in some form or fashion. To where people just start leaving. Do people just start going because they were never actually rooted and grounded in the Word? They were never actually saved. We need to pray for our lost family members, guys. Pray for them. Pray, pray, pray for them to come to Jesus. To where all idols will destroy us if they're before Jesus. Make sure that He's number one. The Holy Spirit will help you. But every idol that's before Him will destroy us. It's easy for us to get to let those things in, but to pray and ask for help. Because the only foundation that will stand is the foundation of Jesus Christ. And those that will stand strong, for us that will stand strong, even whenever our faith is tested, 
Because it's going to be tested. It's being tested right now, and it's only going to be tested more and more and more. But if we stand on the name of Jesus and that foundation, I love the picture of how the rock of Jesus is so big. Every time we fall back, the rock is always big enough to keep us up. And every time we fall back, he helps us get up. We fall back, he helps us get up. That's the rock. That's the beautiful big rock. Because the Bible says... That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So no matter of the devil and the things that he does, if we have the Holy Spirit, we have no fear. Because we know that he's greater. God is greater than the little G, worthless God. Little G, I don't even want to go. Satan. And so we know that, that we have this faith and we have this hope that's not of this world. We, we have this hope in his glorious appearing. You know, and I'm going to keep talking about the appearing of Jesus. I'm going to keep preaching about the return of Jesus because it could be at any minute. It could be at any moment. I heard a message this week about a guy who's like, he said that the founding, the, the fathers of the early church, one of their messages was always about the return of Jesus. If you don't, if you're not talking about that, if we're not ready for that, if we're not waiting for his appearance, and of course, some people say, well, you're talking about it. What are you doing? We're doing here stuff here. We're the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. And I love how this week at Park and Pray, Eli walked up to me and he said, he asked me, he said, what, are the, what does it mean to be the hands and the feet of Jesus? And I love that because he asked me that question and I explained it to him, you know, and it was beautiful because if we get our kids to thinking about things, talk to them about it, then they're going to understand, what we, but it's our job to teach them. And we have some great teachers here. It's beautiful. It's where he comes and gets his bride. So those building upon sand is a picture of those around us who are not filling their lamps up, right, in their secret place. It makes me think about, I heard this week, Psalm 91 says, Someone, for those that dwell in the secret place, but the thing is, is are we dwelling in the secret place? We should all have a place that you go to. Could be your pickup, could be your shower, could be the church, could be wherever, to go and dwell in that secret place. Because the closer we get to Him, the closer we're gonna the the more secure we're gonna be protected. And I've been talking about prayer this morning. We need to have a prayer life, guys. We went through a, a deal yesterday, um, and and the biggest thing is to know. That it's that it's not just it's not just completing an action. It's not just just doing an activity, but it's about speaking to the King, right? And just asking Him for help. Prayer lives need to be lifted up. We need to be getting into the Word. And then, unfortunately, for those that have that false hope, because their foundation is not on the rock, they're going to be washed away. But it's up to us to give them hope to teach them, and to show them. And so if you're in here, if you're listening, and, and there might be some things, and I was kind of going through these details this week, to where, talking about people getting weeded out. If you find yourself not really happy gathering, or you're not really happy worshiping, or there's some things you don't really like the name of Jesus, or there are some things that, that you just, you're just like, man, I don't really want to be here. I don't really want this. I don't want this. And I would just say, guys, please, please, please examine your relationship with him. Because a true worshiper of Jesus, someone that loves it, man, they love being here, right? We gather as the saints. We gather as the body of Christ. We gather together because of him and because we love each other. It's just a beautiful thing. But I know that if someone... I used to be this way, guys. Before I was saved, I didn't like the name of Jesus. Somebody started saying his name, I was trying to run away. But that's a picture of an unconverted person who doesn't want to be here. But they're just here because they're supposed to be here. And I would just say, guys, cry out to the Lord and he will help you. So I just encourage us all today. If you're not right with the Lord, time is short. It's very short. To repent and believe. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind. Repentance is to whenever we say, Lord, I, I get on my knees and I say, please help me. Please help me. I need help. But see, we repent because of the goodness of God.
Because we see ourselves close to him and we're like, man, whenever the Holy Spirit hits us and we're like, you know, and even for us, I mean, not even, but for us as Christians to continue on that path of saying, Lord, I need your help. Lord, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of something, we say, please forgive me. I, I've, had, I've given, been given a picture lately to whenever I ask him to forgive me for maybe an action that I shouldn't have done. I see a picture of a, like the waves just washing them away, just washing them away to keep on that narrow path. To repent and to believe. To believe in the life and the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you probably wonder, why am I talking about this? Because this is a picture of someone who, who is, who is the, on the rock, right? Someone who, that, that's, it's all about Christ and Christ crucified. It's all about that. And so for us as the body of Christ, those of us that stand firm... Stand firm, and I want to emphasize firm, to where things don't shake us. We all need to be awake to the fact that we have power in the name of Jesus. And I want to emphasize this. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, we have the power to tread on scorpions and serpents. We have the power in Jesus, the resurrection power of Jesus to do Mighty things. He says, when he leaves, he says, you're going to do more mighty things than I. We have the Holy Spirit. And we need to be so filled up in this hour. So filled up that hell shakes when we get into our prayer closets. To where there is a wanted poster in hell with our name on because we are praying for people. Because every day we get up and we're praying and we're seeking him. And we're in his word. And we're telling people about him to where hell shakes when you're a sold-out Christian, hell hates you. And so with this, this, whole, this whole virus, right, this, this virus and this demonic agenda being pushed and that everything that's going on in this world, we have to know that we can go to Jesus and we can ask for him to cover us in his precious blood that precious holy blood that he shed for us on Calvary to cover us and to dwell in that secret place. Psalm 91, to dwell in that secret place. And for us to boldly approach our Father's throne of grace and mercy and ask for him to help us. Ask for him to help us and to get close to him as though we're permeated. Permeated is like covered. In the, in the Holy Spirit's power, in the Holy Spirit's peace, in the Holy Spirit's joy and love and, and just the beautiful things about it. But I just call us right now. If you're not awake right now, wake up. Wake up. Because just like with Noah, nobody, everybody thought he was crazy, right? Right? He's building this ark in the middle of nowhere. I think the Bible said 450 feet long or something like that. And, and he's a preacher of righteousness, right? He's basically, he's over there in the middle of nowhere. He's probably got this long hair, this big beard. He's preaching, repent, repent. And he's building this ark where there's no rain or nothing to be seen. It's probably just sunny and, and no clouds or nothing, right? And no one thought it would until the day that it flooded. But see, Noah listened to the voice of God and he said, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. The Lord said, build it. He said, I'll build it. And everybody around him, the Bible says in the last days, there will be mockers and scoffers saying, there's, he's never going to return. He's never going to come back. There's, th this isn't going to happen. What are you talking about? There's a storm. What are you talking about? You're crazy. And he said, you know what? I'm trusting him. Because someday it's going to pour down thunder, lightning. It's going to be wild. But if we're trusting Him, we're going to be okay. But see, the thing is, is, there will be many that knock on the door and it's going to be too late for them. Just like the parable of the ten virgins. They're going to be knocking. They're going to be wanting help. They're going to be wanting that oil. But we can't share our own oil. Right? It's ours. But it's our job to warn others. So if there ever was a time for us to be bold and courageous and sold out as the body of Jesus Christ, we're the body in this room. And many of us are here. Many of, 
of you that are listening online. We are the body of Jesus Christ. And it's time for us to save souls from an eternity in hell. A lot of people are going to hell, guys. I'm going to say that right now. A lot of people are walking down the streets that are just living their life and, and building their own kingdoms and doing their own things, and they're just headed to that place. But if we're not doing our job, if we're not, it's not just my job to preach the gospel. It's everyone. It's everyone to tell people about saving faith in Jesus Christ. Do we have enough faith to tell people, um, have enough love, have enough conviction to tell people of the hope of Jesus Christ? The only hope that we have is in Him. So earlier this week, I officiated a funeral for the children's family. And... It would have been really easy for me just to give this sweet, loving message and everything else. But for those of us who love Jesus passionately, and we know that we're his ambassadors in this world, right? We represent him. We know that the entire truth of the gospel has to be preached. And how without Jesus in our lives, I told probably 100 people that without Jesus in your life, truly in your life, that we don't stand a chance. But see, we have many people that are walking around this life that they're just like, man, I'm good, I'm fine. They're blinded. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 talks about how the little G God of this world, the devil, blinds the minds of unbelievers in order for them not to see the glory of Christ. But we just need to wake up. If we do not want to gather, if we do not want to serve, if we do not Love Jesus with all of our heart. We're being deceived. We're being deceived. And so I got up and we, I talked about this. Even talked about hell. Even talked about the realities of everything. Because many, every day, we're walking streets. We're walking down the street. And we're seeing people that unfortunately are headed to the lake of fire. But we can get them out of there. We can say, hey, Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. And see, our Father is so long-suffering. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but for all of us to come to saving faith in Jesus Christ. Every single one of us. But He doesn't, He's not going to drag anybody to heaven. He's not going to force anybody to do anything. Because we're living, right now, we're living in the days of Noah. Jesus put it in Matthew 24. And I talked about Noah earlier. He looked crazy. He looked crazy. But see, he was living by faith and not by fear. God told him, build it. He said, yes, sir. If God's telling us to do something right now, are we saying yes, sir? Are we saying, oh, not yet? Oh, maybe not. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't really know. Because for many of us, the Lord is calling us to speak up. We're the only ones that can speak on his behalf. Right? He, we're his vessels. We are to be used for His glory, for His honor, for His praise, and for, for us to wake people up, to set that alarm off, right? Who likes waking up in the morning? Raise your hand. I know my wife doesn't. He doesn't want us to hit the snooze, right? He wants us to jump up and go and do it. To not compromise. There's, there's going to be a lot of compromise in these days. A lot of people are going to compromise the gospel. They're going to compromise against this agenda that's being pushed. They're going to compromise against things that are easier. But it's called the narrow way for a reason. The broad way leads to destruction. The narrow way leads to Jesus. And it's not easy. But we have each other, right? Look around, right? I want you to look around at each other. We have each other. We have each other. Cheryl, I'm so glad that you're here. I love you. Jesus loves you so much. We have each other, guys. We have to trust Him nowadays more than ever. More than ever, trust Him by living, by faith. What is faith? Anybody? Things that you can't see, right? So we live by faith. Don't get caught up in everything that we can see. There's so many things going on in the spiritual that we cannot see that are leading to the return of Jesus Christ. Because for us, tough decisions will come, right? There's going to be jobs saying, well, you can't be here anymore if you're not going to do this. 
Right? They're going to be thankful. But see, if we live by faith and we know who provides for us, just like before I prayed for the offering, He's the owner. We manage it. We have kids, but we manage them for Him. He's the owner. If we trust Him, if we trust the one that actually somebody one time said, said uh, what is He going to do? Send money down from the sky? Well, yeah, He will. He'll send it some way. He, he will send it in some way, sort of fashion, but we got to trust Him. Just trust Him and have faith. So the perfect storm is only perfect. This is wrapping it up, guys, okay? It's only perfect to those who are made right in Christ Jesus, who are born again in the Spirit above. If you're in here and you're born again, you're a new creation. Your old person is behind you, and you are new, new in Christ Jesus, and who place their hope in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Him. Someday, He's going to wipe this earth out and we're going to be set foot on here for a thousand years for the millennium period. And he's going to be ruling this earth before we go to heaven for a thousand years with a rod of iron. He's the king. It's his kingdom. We serve him. And so we know that when the perfect storm hits, we will stand firm on our, on our foundation of Jesus. And we know that soon, soon, even though this storm hits, right? Even though this, this storm, whenever it does come, it will hit. The saints are going up. We're going up. But for those who are living to satisfy their flesh, they'll be left behind. Sadly enough. But what is it? It's our job to tell them. All we can do is be the salt and the light. All we can do is pray. All we can do is be the hands and the feet. But as us, as the body of Christ, if we're not doing that, then we're doing the Lord a disservice. Be left behind with a deadly storm that will bring upon the Antichrist who will be demonically possessed by the devil and his demonic agenda that will control the world for seven years. But for us, it's happy time, right? If Jesus is your first love, if you have no doubts that you're saved, if you are right with the Lord, there's no worries. So I'm going to close with a story. Myself and Pastor Leslie went to the jail here a couple weeks ago, and there was an inmate that told me this story. And guys, pretty good stuff right here. All right, so there was a man and his girlfriend that were, uh, they were at a carnival. And uh, he was trying to win his girlfriend a teddy bear. He was playing this game, shooting a basketball into a hoop, right? And he couldn't ever make the damn basketball in the hoop. But there was this man that, that walked up behind him, and he tapped him on the shoulder. And he's like, hey, man, I just felt like I needed to come up here because um, if you need any help in the future, he said, I'm a spiritual counselor. I can help you. I'll be here for you, whatever you need. And this man that's shooting the basketball, trying to win for his girlfriend, he says, man, get out of here. You're crazy. I don't even know who you are. I don't know why you're talking to me. You're weird. Leave. So he keeps trying to shoot. He still can't make it. This guy comes up one more time and he said, hey, I just felt like I needed to come one more time. And he said, I, I, just, I just want for you to know that if you need anything in the future, man, I'm here. I'll give you my phone number. I'll give you my card, whatever. And this guy's like, dude, get out of here. You're weird. You look funny. You're acting weird. I don't even want anything to do with you. And so about five or ten years later, this man who's, well, he got his girlfriend a teddy bear. Uh, who was trying to get it, you know, who won his girlfriend a teddy bear. He's checking his mail at his house. And, um, and he goes through his, his mail and he finds these, he, he's got these, these tickets that are just built up, right? He's, he's kind of been ignoring his, his, uh, his tickets, he's got speeding tickets, he's got some that are more serious, he's got some that are real serious that he hasn't been taken care of. And so the next day he goes to the courthouse and he takes care of his smaller tickets, some failure to appear, some speeding tickets, he gets them taken care of, gets them paid off, no, no problem. But there's some that he has that he's got to actually appear in court on and he's got to answer for what he did. Well, before he goes into the courthouse, He's about to walk down the hall and he sees this little room over here and there's a there's a glass a window and he can see somebody in there and, and there's this man in there the man that had tapped him on the shoulder 
And he walked in there. He's like, man, he said, a while, you know, five, ten years ago, he said, uh, you told me that if I needed something, if I needed something to go ahead and uh, to get a hold of, he's like, man, today I need you so bad. I need you because I'm in deep trouble. He said, I've got these tickets. He said, there's some that are like 25 to life, man. He's like, I don't know what to do. I need help. And this man turns around, the one that had been tapping him on the shoulder. And he says, yeah, he said, you know, a couple years ago, he said, I was here to help you. I, I was your savior, but today I'm the judge. So that's a picture of Jesus Christ knocking on our door as our savior. We're saved by grace. Grace is a gift. But someday, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. Someday he's going to He's going to come back and he's going to judge every single person that's, that's sitting here, every person that's listening, every person in the world. Because people want to preach about a sweet Jesus, but he is God, a holy God, who is going to judge everyone. We're all going to appear at his throne. We're not going to go to that throne with our wife or with our girlfriend or with our dog. We're going to go to that throne individually. But if we're covered in the blood of Jesus by being born again of the Holy Spirit, we have nothing to worry about. But if we are not, He is going to meet us and He is going to say, get away, I never knew you. I want for every person in here, every person online to know that we all have a decision to make. Because the realities of heaven and hell are as clear as God crystal as clear as those transparent streets of gold that someday heaven that we're going to be able to walk down in heaven it's clear the gospel is clear but jesus is always there until the time is too late i don't tell you guys this or anyone to scare you this is actually a beautiful thing we live in a period right now of grace. But someday that grace is going to be taken away. And it's either we have Jesus or we don't. As simple as that. But the beautiful thing is, is that whenever we accept Him as our Lord and Savior, He gives us a new life in Him. That new life is beautiful. That new life is freedom. We still have spiritual wars and battles that we deal with. But we know without a doubt that whenever we pass away, we're going to be with Him. And that's a beautiful thing to know. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Love you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. We could have the lights turned out, please.